I'm Vivian, the senior yearbook editor, and welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript gives you a taste of Northampton restaurant Seven Strong, goes inside the newest NHS theater production, and sits down with the Northampton High softball team. Tensions on the Korean Peninsula have escalated in the last few weeks. Recent missile tests conducted by North Korea spurred inflammatory rhetoric from President Trump. North Korea has responded with increased military activity and several large-scale missile tests, while the U.S. has been working to make a missile defense system in South Korea operational. On Wednesday, U.S. Senators were bused to the White House for a briefing on the situation. The elections in France ended in the top two candidates, centrist Emmanuel Macron and far-right nationalist Marine Le Pen, moving on to a runoff election on May 7th. Le Pen is another in a series of populist, nationalist candidates that have won surprising victories, such as those in Britain and the United States. Neither of France's two mainstream parties, the Socialists and the Republicans, advanced to the second round of voting. The outcome of this election will likely decide the fate of the European Union. Le Pen supports a French exit from the European Union, while Macron advocates a globalist foreign policy. A third refugee family arrived in Northampton Wednesday night. Members of the Congolese family had previously spent approximately 20 years in a Rwandan refugee camp. The family of three, which includes a one-year-old named Wilson, are currently staying in temporary housing in Northampton. Hi, I'm Elena Fragamini. For years, Northampton has been known for its many dining options and vibrant food culture. Now, downtown Northampton has a new and unique addition to its restaurant community. Seven Strong, located at Seven Strong Avenue, opened in the summer of 2016 with a commitment to create Pioneer Valley cuisine. I sat down with executive chef and owner Jonathan Adler to find out what this meant and how his kitchen puts this mission into practice. My name is Jonathan Adler and I'm the chef and owner of Seven Strong Restaurant in Northampton. So I've been cooking professionally um, for the past 15 years and I'm originally from Western Massachusetts. So um, coming back here, uh, the opportunity to open a restaurant presented itself. What's unique about Seven Strong is that it is the first restaurant that only cooks Pioneer Valley cuisine. And what I mean by that is we only use what's available in the region. Uh, we don't use things like black pepper or lemons or limes. You know, if you lived in Western Massachusetts in the Northampton area 60 years ago, um, you'd probably never seen a lemon or a pineapple in your life. The reason why we're trying to uh, source locally is not only to support the local economy and support local farmers and stuff, but do things like reduce our carbon footprint. All of our compost either goes to farms or to feed the animals that we end up using. Um, and then just zero waste makes sense in terms of a business sense. You know, if I'm juicing a bunch of vegetables, um, then I'm gonna take all the pulp and dry it because there's a high amount of starch in the vegetable pulp that you can find in something like flour. Um, I also find it uh, makes us more of a creative kitchen and creative restaurant because once you've limited the amount of access you have to certain ingredients and specific things, it forces you to become more creative and rely on technique um, rather than Flavors. We just started a guest chef series um, where every month we're bringing in a chef from either around the country or around the world to do a special dinner with us. Our most recent one was with a guy named Johnny Ortiz who flew in from New Mexico, but he used to be my sous chef at the three Michelin star restaurant that I worked at in San Francisco. The next person that we're having come is from a two Michelin star restaurant in Oakland. As much as we don't want to admit it, um, we are kind of the fancy restaurant in here. Um, but that doesn't mean it can't be accessible or it can't be affordable. What we offer is a $50 tasting menu that you would, where you would find in any major city would cost you $150. Um, and it's accessible to anyone who lives in this area. And I think that's quite special. At the end of the day, this is one of the most fertile places in the country for growing produce. And I think it's important for a restaurant to highlight that. Seven Strong's focus on sustainability and locally sourced food does not distract from their core practice as a restaurant, creating high quality, delicious meals for customers. Jonathan Adler and the staff of Seven Strong are intently focused on every part of the dining experience, truly from farm to table. Adler intricately crafts dishes, creating meals that, as I can personally attest to, taste as amazing as they look. 
I'm Phoebe Jessup. Students involved in theater often choose producing a show as their senior capstone project. Ileana Fournier is directing the upcoming show, Accidental Death of an Anarchist, a dark comedy by Dario Fo. Inspired by real events, the story is based around the murder-suicide of an anarchist illegally held in custody. And so the play is basically about um, this man who is, and he impersonates people and and he finds out that a judge is coming to uh, reopen the inquest of the death of the anarchist and find out what really happened. So he impersonates the judge. And it's, it's a comedy, but there's definitely serious things in it. Since her freshman year, Ileana knew she would want to tackle the challenge of directing her own show. I, I'd seen other people direct, and I was like, well, if they can do it, I can do it, probably. So I pitched my show, and knowing that I'd have a free period, basically, for my capstone to do stuff for it definitely helped a lot and I mean I've had time commitments like this before be acting in shows so it's just a little bit more time to direct. Ileana found the show during her sophomore year but chose it as her capstone because she wanted a show audience could relate to but also find entertaining. And then when I read it again last year I was thinking I just had the political situation at that time in Italy sort of mirrors our political situation now and it brings up issues of police brutality, government corruption, things like that which we in America are dealing with now. Lucia Kahn Sperling, one of the leads of the show, went to school in Germany during seventh grade where she took part in several shows with different companies. Now she enjoys her experience with NHS theater because of the camaraderie. It's a little more of like a community because it's sort of people that you might not normally see in school and then um, you all sort of come together after school, usually in the black box because that's where I have done my shows. Um, and it's really fun, yeah. Though pulled in at the last minute with less time to prepare, Lucia is sure the show will be a success. I'm feeling pretty good. I have a ton of lines in the show. Um, my character has a lot of monologues, so it's been kind of difficult trying to memorize all of them, but I think it'll be really good by the time it goes up. Accidental Death of an Anarchist will run in the black box Thursday, May 4th through Saturday, May 6th at 7 p.m. There will also be a 2 p.m. matinee on Saturday. What's this? My name's Conger McCregus, and this is Amped Up with Benny and Logan. Yeah! You're right, Ben! Woo! Y'all ready for this? This week, I talked to NHS juniors Anna Kerwood and Abby Pilas and NHS senior Zoe Driscoll Spar about playing for the softball team. All right, so your team is off to a 7-1 and one start this season. Did you expect such a fast start? Yeah, I think we did because we didn't really lose any seniors last year, so we were expecting to come out strong, and our strength of schedule wasn't that great in the beginning of the season, but we're expecting you know a lot of hard games ahead. I definitely had confidence in the new players that were coming on and what we had left over from last year, so I wasn't too nervous, but um, I definitely thought we were going to have a little bit more trouble in our first game than we did. So there's only a couple of seniors on this team this year. Uh, how have some of the younger players stepped up? Oh, they've stepped up a lot. You know, Amelia Pilas, she had to really step up in a big role because our second baseman got hurt from last year. So she's doing a great job this season. She's really killing it at the plate. And, you know, she hasn't made any errors yet in the field. They're not scared. Like, I was terrified as a freshman. And I really think they've just stepped into their roles and been a huge help to the team. So you guys suffered a big loss against Hampshire early on in the season. Uh, but you haven't lost since. So what changes did the team make after that game? Yeah, um, I think it definitely motivated us to do better in our next games because it sucks to lose. Um, no one liked that feeling and practice the next day was totally different too. I think that that game we were really nervous because they're a really good team and we decided to go into games more um, like prepared I guess and like with more confidence. So last year in the playoffs you got eliminated in a really close game against Minichog. Have you used that as motivation this season or are you just focused on this year? Yeah, um, everyone on the team's looking forward to that game. Um, May 12th is something that everyone has in their minds. Um, that's really just what we're working towards to beat them. That's definitely some motivation. They've been our rivals since like my freshman year and uh, we can't wait to play them again. So your last four pitching outings, you've only given up one run. How confident are you feeling right now when you go out to pitch? Um, I'm super confident, mostly because of the defense that I have behind me. So I just let them do the work. I'm, I'm the one throwing and if they hit it, I just know they'll be right there to get the out for me. What is it like having your dad as the coach? Um, it can be difficult. He's really hard on me. We get into a lot of arguments. 
And finally, you're going to be playing softball at Merrimack next year. So what did you like about that program? Um, I really just love the coach. She spoke to me a lot. She really cared about like my academics and athletically. Um, so I just kind of felt that she wasn't fake. Like some of the other coaches seemed like they just were on a script kind of when they were telling me what they had in mind. Um, so yeah, she was definitely a huge part of my decision. Um, and I love the campus and stuff too. All right, great. Thanks so much for being on Hamped Up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check your school email for the link to purchase a yearbook. The deadline to buy them is May 4th. Also, the, de the deadline to apply to the Technology Department's Communications and Media Production class, which creates this very broadcast, is today. Pick up or submit applications in Jeremy Whalen's room, G16. Mm -hmm.